remind yourself that you know um, it's a game you know this this and a game means you enjoy it you have fun you know more recent times as in the last sort of 15 years or so um having kind of um had my best playing days over and done with i kind of got to a point where i was thinking well um, I'm not getting any younger. Um, what can I give back to the sport that's given me so much? And so that's kind of when I started to get more involved in coaching juniors. And I felt that was you know, going to be uh, the right thing for me. It was like my true north almost. Even in my career, you know, all, all of the different things that I've done have all had one thing in common really about developing other people to be the best version of themselves. But probably the starting point was that kind of t that team element and that making friends through playing sport and learning about each other, learning about yourself in those situations. You know, I saw it as kind of my, again, um, purpose was to kind of just keep the dialogue around sport and cricket in particular going in whatever small way I could. Uh, but somebody listened to one of those chats and um, and said, you know, these would make a really good podcast. Why don't you um, try to get them to turn them into a podcast? Yeah, one of the things that I was adamant about was having an objective to establish the first girls team within the within the club's 140, 150 years of history. But the year that we were going to launch coincided with the lockdown. So all that kind of ground to a halt. And so, so I thought, well, maybe a podcast will be the, the, you know, the way of trying to substitute the fact that we won't be able to launch this year. And so that's why I, I decided that the, the topic for that first venture into podcast world would be girls and women's cricket. And, and that's that's what I did. It's not just about you know, one little category of elite players. It was people from all different parts of the game. So we had coaches, players, um, umpires, referees, scorers, people who did marketing, people from the professional game, from the amateur game. So it was a really um, wide ranging mix of guests, but every single one, I was just blown away by their humility of what they've, what they'd accomplished. Um, and the challenges that they'd overcome in uh, pursuing what was their passion to to be involved in the game that we all love. So tonight, it'd be good to try and get him something back from all the effort he puts in. All these podcasts, they're only half an hour long, but it must take him hours to sort out the questions he's going to ask um, and set up and actually getting these people to come and speak to him. He's had players for big top teams and stuff, talk to them and coaches and things like that. But none of it's, you know, it's not a job. It is, it is voluntary. There's like over a hundred episodes now. I think we're on 101 maybe this week. And he's done all that himself. On top of the coaching, the training, his job and, and all the rest of it. I think it'd be very difficult to imagine what our club would look like without him there. sport is really important to the mental health of teenagers and children as well as physical health because it's a team thing isn't it it's getting out there meeting other fr friends and without Tom in this community there would be no Warrington junior cricket team it's as simple as that and I think the people that I've spoken to so far what one of the first things that um, strikes me about um, common themes is that fun is the most important thing you know um, but it sometimes gets overlooked um, not not for wrong reasons but just there's so many other things to think about but fun it has to be fun you have to almost remind yourself that you know um, it's a game you know this this and a game means you enjoy it you have fun